Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live with Prima. My name is Frank Garcia. Can you guys hear me and see me okay? Let me know if you guys can see me. Hey, Janelle. Thank you for coming. Hey, Delena. Karen. Let me know if you guys can see me and hear me okay. Hey, Cheryl. Okay, it seems like you guys can hear me. Welcome to Live with Prima. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. We're gonna be working on a very fun album. This is my um, Christmas album that we're gonna be working on today. It's a very fun album. Just wanna pan down the camera here so you guys can take a look at what's going on. Okay. Just move my mat over just a tad, tad bit. So um, this is a really fun album. It has um, a shaker in it. So I put um, all of my sequins. I always get questions from all of my students, like, what do I do with my with my sequins? And I'm like, well, you know, this is a way, a way that you can use your sequins that are always included in some of the Prima embellishments. And you can see um, how cute that looks, right? So we're gonna try to get through this album today. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things that we have to do. So I wanna get started right away. Um, so I'm, everybody can hear me and see me okay? All right, so we're gonna be using my collection here, um, my Victorian Christmas collection. Um, I absolutely love my new collection. Um, it's been doing so well, so I appreciate you guys supporting my collection. We're also going to be using my brand new album, um, which is the Tall Album. And um, I love this size. Um, it makes it look, oops, camera doesn't like my album. Um, it makes it look like um, a little kind of encyclopedia size or like a regular book size um, album. Okay, so this is the Tall. And let me get the number for you guys, kind of throughout the packaging over here. Um, the number for that is 990572. And this is what the cover looks like, okay? So that's the Tall, and that's from Memory Hardware. And what I've done is um, I went ahead and um, kind of pre-started um, this part here because I wanted you guys to see um, what I've done, but I didn't want you guys to see me paint. So I went ahead and painted a one inch border around each of the pages. So on each page, I went ahead and just painted a one inch border. It doesn't have to be neat. As you can tell, I just kind of brush on the paint. I went ahead and used some metallic folk art paint. Okay, you can use Martha Stewart, folk, um, Martha Stewart gold paint. You can use um, folk art gold paint. It doesn't really matter. Any gold paint you have on hand. Okay, so we're gonna be using that. And then um, for our cover, we're gonna be using um, obviously my Christmas paper. So this album is five by seven, okay? Um, the inside pages are five by seven and the outside pages are a little bit larger. And I always do that with my albums because I like to have a border around everything. If you notice on the, the album itself, there's a cute little border. Um, I just love the sequence, sorry. I just had to do that. Um, I love the border around the book. Um, it just adds a, a very, um, ornate and very nice touch. So um, that's what we're gonna do. So that's the reason we painted that. Um, we're gonna be using the A4 paper pad. Um, I, I like using the A4 for this size just because it's nice and long, but you can use 12 by 12 or any paper that you have. Um, this is 995 by and this is from the Victorian Christmas collection. I did have a question about this. Um, they asked me if um, the pads have gold foil. Um, they do not, and the reason they do not is because I, I typically these, um, since it's such a smaller print, I think the foil won't look that well. So the foil is only on the 12 by 12, which I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, start doing that. I went ahead and cut out two pieces of the berry paper. I think this is my favorite paper from the whole collection. And um, this is gonna be the cover and the back cover of the album, okay? I went ahead and inked um, the edges on the paper, just kind of with a marker. And I'm going to go ahead and start taping those now. I'm going to be using my artisan tape in one inch to go ahead and um, tape those down. I always use um, artisan tape for covers because the cover is what's going to hold most of your heavy embellishments. So you want to make sure that the cover is very, very sturdy. It's like, it's like building a house. You know, there's so much stuff that you're going to put on top that you want to make sure that anything you put on top of this piece of paper is going to hold. So if you're using any kind of cheaper tape or tape that's not strong enough, um, it's going to fall apart. 
Okay, you want to make sure that this lasts a while. So I always use a strong tape. And since this is book binding tape, we know that it'll it'll hold. And I had a lot of questions from people asking me when this is shipping. Um, the arts and tape is coming into Prima, hopefully at the end of this month. So you guys can look at it, look for it in store soon. Um, I know everybody's asking for it, so can't wait for it to arrive and can't wait to see what you guys do with it. So that's the first page. I'm going to do the back cover. Just going to put that on the sides. And again, you don't have to do the whole entire thing. You just kind of go around each of the four sides and I put a little strip in the middle. Hey Carola, welcome. Okay. So there we go. We have our two covers. And um this is a repeating pattern, so I never worry about what direction it's going since any direction it goes is pretty good with me. Hey, Carrie. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take my paper. And before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and put an ink pad in between my pages because I like to work on a straight surface. So um, when it's a little flat like this, I just like to work like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to put my first paper on here. I'm going to try and center it the best I can. That looks pretty centered to me. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that. I'm going to turn it over to the back side. And we're going to use the same piece of paper. I'm just going to cut this excess off right here. Thank you, Chalk. You're so sweet. Yes, the albums are very sturdy. I love my albums. They're just, they're my babies, my babies. I'm just going to put this right in the middle again. Okay, just like this. All right, so now that we have that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the spine now since we're on that. I'm going to be using my artisan leather paper. If you guys haven't seen this, this is um, paper that looks and acts like leather, but it's still paper. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be using for my um, spine. And I'm going to cut this down to the, the height of the book. So the height of the book is going to be seven and a half. So that's how long we need the paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this at seven and a half. And then I'm just going to cut it down. I'm not sure how much I need yet, so I'm just going to cut it down to um, five, probably, just to be on the safe side. And this, this leather paper is great for, for spines. Um, it makes It gives it a really, really nice um, feel. And this is the smooth leather paper, okay? It also comes in a croc, kind of croc finish, cut it rough. Um, but I really love this. And you can ink this, you can distress it, you can do all sorts of things with it. So I really love that. And um, I've been loving all the samples people have been making. I'm just going to go ahead and cover up the edges here with my marker. And I love the finish on it. It's just really great. I think what I love about it the most is that there's really not much that you need to do to it. It just looks beautiful the way it does. So, OK, 
Okay, so now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my, oops, my artisan tape. I'm gonna take the quarter inch tape and I'm gonna stretch out a strip right next to that paper. And then I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and pressed. You need to make sure that that area is really, really um, burnished because that's the part where it's opening. So you need to make sure this is a very nice Ayla, is Ayla here? Hey, Ayla. Um, once I have that, I'm going to take my one inch tape. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the edge again. And again, I like to make sure that it's just all the way to the edge. Gonna put a little strip right here just because I missed that little part. And as you can see, this tape is very strong, so you have to be very careful. So now that I have this part, I'm gonna go ahead and take my leather paper and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this front one. And I'm gonna start right here at the edge. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that on there. I need to cut this just a little bit more because it's not quite straight. Much better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and press this down. And then once you see that you have this spine here, um, you're gonna very carefully wrap it around and holding this back part, okay? And I'm just gonna press it against my chest here, making sure that it's straight. And then you can always take a, a bone folder if you wanted to and just kind of make that in that, but I typically don't need it. I'm just going to now put this on my trimmer and I'm gonna cut this down a little bit because I don't want it to be that long. And I, I know it's a little bit wasteful, but it's to me it's the safest way to do this um, without getting it all crooked or getting it too short. Um, so it works for me, uh, but you can do it any way you like. Just gonna put some more of the artisan tape on here. And then I'm gonna put another strip right here, right at the edge. So now I'm going to go ahead and carefully just wrap that around over the book. Okay. 
And there you have it. You have a leather spine. Can you believe this is paper? I am simply in love. What can I say? Now I'm going to go ahead and um, take my scissors and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of that excess paper. You just have to be very careful not to cut the actual book part. And of course this is all cosmetic. I it just drives me a little crazy. But you can leave it if you guys want. It's up to you. I just like to cut it off because I like straight lines like everybody else. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to my cover since I have my spine done. And see how easy that is? I mean, this you can do on anything. Um, you can do it on a layout, you can do it on a card, but I think it specifically looks beautiful on books. I mean, I can just touch this all day. It just looks beautiful. Okay, so now that we have the spine done, I'm going to go ahead and um, work on my cover. Now for the cover, I went ahead and took and, and took a piece of this stripe paper. I'm going to show it to you guys in just a sec. This one here. And I went ahead and punched out a three inch circle. Now um, you can go ahead and um, use your punch if you have a punch or you can use a die. Um, I did went ahead and I used a layer die. I used a memory box layer die. This is like a circle die. And I went ahead and punched that out or, or die cut that out. I'm not using the right words here. But you just want to go ahead and die cut. And I also went ahead and punched him out. And he's from one of the papers um, from the pad. You can find him here. Well, he's on one of the papers. I don't know if I have another sheet of that left. But he's on one of the papers. So you just went ahead and um, punch him out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and ink my paper here. Um, the paper comes in brown right now. Um, maybe, you know, you never know. You might see it in other colors later. But for now, it comes in brown. But you can definitely distress the paper to the core and then ink it if you wanted to do that. Um, that's always an option. I'm just inking my paper edges here very carefully. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, use some foam tape okay, for my piece here. Just gonna take the pieces and put them at the edge. And this part is very important because it needs to be slightly raised, and it also needs to make you need to make sure that um, it's well adhered. Just gonna cut it down to this part right here. I'm going to leave a little bit of space right here. You guys will see why in a minute. But I am going to put some tape in the corners right here. Okay, then I'm going to move on to the bottom part. I know, right? Isn't it crazy how you have to cover up paper? take another piece of foam tape. I'm going to cut it in half just to make sure I have a balance in the center here. Now 
I'm just adding one final piece over here. Just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take off all the tape. This is, I think, the most tedious part, right? Taking off the cover for the tape. Especially because there's so many pieces, huh? Okay. Right, so once you have that out, you want to take your book again. And we're going to put this in the cover. And we're going to go ahead and like here and center it. Of course, you want to center it as much as you can. Once you have that, you're going to take Mr. Santa here, and he's going to go in the middle of the book. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. I'm going to foam tape him to the middle. Because we want him to be a little bit raised. Thanks, Chalk. Hey, Janine. People were asking about something. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put Mr. Santa in the middle. Try to center this as best as possible. Now, once, once you have Mr. Santa in the middle, um, you're going to need some sequins. So now what I did is I went ahead and took the sequins from the chipboard pack. The chipboard has gold sequins, which are so beautiful. They're matte. Okay. And then um, I did mix in a few other sequins from the crystal pack. But um, you can use just the gold ones that are in that other pack. Now what you want to do is you want to take the sequins and you want to just kind of put them in your palm here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put those in the middle of his face. I kind of want to keep them there right now because they kind of get a little naughty after a while. And it just depends how much, how many sequins you want to put in there. I like a lot, but not crazy a lot. So you can definitely put as much as you want on there. So you can see sequins are flying everywhere now. So I need to kind of get them under control. Just going to pull this over here. Now you need to make sure that you don't put too many because then it's going to cover his entire face when it's shaking. So I'm just going to put, I think it might need a little bit more.
I love the mix of the sequins that are in the pack. Just makes it look so cute and festive. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and adhere our bubble. Now, the bubble looks like this. Um, these are actually half ornaments, okay? They sell them at any craft store. They come with two pieces, and then you use them to, like, put them on your tree or whatever. Um, but I'm using it for this here, and this is going to go right here in the middle, just like that. And remember how I told you guys that we needed a space? We need a space because of that tab. That tab needs to go somewhere. See how there's a tab? I mean, you can break it off, but that's really what's going to hold down um, the, 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 the whole bubble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, glossy accents and I'm just going to put some on the tab itself. And I'm using a fine tip applicator because it's just easier. And then I'm going to run the glue on the edge of the ornament. Now you can see how thin that is and that's why it helps to have one of these applicators. I'm just going to run it all the way around. You need to make sure this is completely sealed, so that's why we're running this around so none of the sequence escape. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the middle here and tuck the little tab under the paper. Just like that. We're going to let that do its thing. I'm going to take some jute trim. This is just some trim I bought at a hardware store. It's like a brown jute trim. But you can use any brown jute trim. Just gonna cut a piece off and we're gonna wrap the middle of this with that and that's what's gonna cover up that little gap that's in the middle. I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and I'm just gonna run it all around my bubble here. Got a little bit of glue in the bubble, but I'll clean that off later. I'm just going to put some glue over here. And I'm just going to tuck that twine into the gap, okay? Now, I might have to do a second round. And that's just so that it covers up entirely. So I'm just going to run it again. Down at the bottom here. Um, the fine tip you can just find at any craft store um, or scrapbook store. It's called a fine tip liner and it fits the glossy accents bottle perfectly. They're called fine tip liners. That's the company that makes them. Okay. So you can see that that's going to cover the gaps there. Now 
Now I'm going to go ahead and take some of this. Um, I have some twine that's like uh, Christmassy looking. It's like a, like a baker's twine, sort of. And I'm going to use this one as well um, around this bubble. Okay. I'm just going to take my hot glue gun again. And I'm just going to run some glue all around the edge here. Starting right here. And I'm just going to alternate the, the two just kind of in different areas where I see that it needs to go. And you can put as much or as little as you want. I kind of like to go a little overboard because it's such a cute trim. What's everybody doing so far? Is there any questions? I think uh, most craft stores should have a little Christmas section going on now. So um, these ornaments are really easy to find. They're just in the holiday section at most of, well, at least over here in California, we have them in the in the holiday section. So. Should be able to find some there. They're pretty inexpensive. Now I'm not going to put this whole piece of twine. I just want to kind of go around it a few times um, just to make sure that I have enough. Okay, so I'm going to end it right here. This is kind of where the rest of the jute kind of ends, so I'm just going to end it right there. So you can see we have our little shaker going on here. Super duper cute. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm gonna start working with some flowers. Eight. 
And um, for the flowers, I'm going to be using one of these here. This is um, for my Christmas line. I kind of used two of them already. This is um, for you, Noel, and I'm going to be using the darker one, but you can use the lighter one. It doesn't matter. This is item number 583453. I'm going to remove the green off of this. This green just isn't Christmassy enough for me, so I'm just going to remove it. And this is going to go right here. I'm just going to go ahead and put a dot of glue there, right here. And then um, the next item we're going to be using is um, from this pack. This is um, 12th Night. going to be using one of these. I kind of like this one right here. And that's going to go right here. Next flower is from this pack here, and this is um, Herrera Noel, and this is 583422. And I'm taking this really beautiful red one. This is so cute. I'm just going to cut off these leaves here. And this one's going to go right over here. It's kind of tucked in. About there. Going to be using this one next. And this one is going to go right down here. This is what it's looking like so far. You can see. Now I have um, some little pine cones that I found at a local craft store. Um, these look like this. They're just little tiny pine cones. Just gonna cut a couple off. They're in the fall section. You can find them in your local craft store. And I'm just gonna tuck some in here, just in different areas. Kind of like one right here. Just kind of makes it look so cute. And I'm gonna tuck another one in over here on this side. Then I have some um, some berries, and these berries are also from the floral section um, at craft stores. You can use um, any berries. I'm just going to tuck some in right here.
and um, it's coming together pretty nicely here. I'm just going to tuck in another piece right here. Okay, this is what it's looking like so far. Now we have these leaves. These are from the collection of Midnight Kiss 583460. I'm going to take a couple of these leaves out. And I'm also going to take some of these cute smaller berries out. And these are perfect because they coordinate with the bigger berries over here. I'm just going to take a little bunch and cut them off. I don't use the whole stem, I just kind of cut pieces off. And I'm just going to go ahead and put some glue on here. Kind of tuck them into the larger berries. Kind of like how that looks right here. So I'm just going to a little bit of glue. Okay. I love the different colors that come in these berry packs. They're just so cute. You just have to be very careful with them because they're very, very dainty. Just going to put some in here. And I use these to kind of cover up the gaps between my my flowers and my other embellishments. It just works so great. Now, of course, um, I always like to add um, some of my pearls. And just I, what I did is I went ahead and separated my pearls by color. I know, crazy, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add a little pearl right here. It's a lot of strings today. Now right here, I'm going to go ahead and add a few couple of more berries from this pack on the side over here. This is going to take one little bunch, kind of try to keep them together to add them on this side. Okay, now I'm going to take some of these leaves and I'm going to cut them in half. 
and I'm going to put one over here on this side. And the reason I cut them in half is I like to use the other half for something else. So I'm just use this on this side. Just kind of tuck that in. I'm going to take another one. And I love these leaves. They're just, they're like fabric. So they're like nice and velvety. I'm going to do another one over here. So remember to save your leaves because then um, you can use them for something else. Okay, so it's looking pretty good here. What do you guys think? Looking kind of cute, huh? So now I'm going to go ahead and take some of my pearls and just start sticking some in different places that I feel like needs a little bit of an accent. Oops. This one kind of went a little haywire. So I added one right here on this side. And I think we might need another one here. Are you talking about Clipper Street in Canada or in where? Because um, if you're in Canada, um, Scrap Addicts carries all of my paper. I'm going to add this little bunch of berries to the side over here. I love that the pearls can go really anywhere, and um, I just love the color of them. They just add so much accent to your projects. And this is item number 99398, by the way, if you guys are wondering about the pearls. They're part of my memory hardware collection. How's it looking, guys? What do you guys think? I think it's looking pretty good. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start working on my top here. Now, I am going to leave a little bit of a gap for my, um, my rhinestone chain. But I am going to put some of this one here. That's where this one goes. Now I need, need to move some of this glue stuff out of the way here. Like everything wants to stick to the bubble. Everything. Everything. Okay, so I'm going to add this rhinestone chain on the top here. I'm just going to take some of my fabric tack. And I'm going to try to add a very fine line all the way around. 
It needs to be right at the edge of the bubble. Now this rhinestone chain you can get um, in the jewelry section of any craft store. It's um, fairly inexpensive. Well, it depends what kind you buy. But it's not too much. I'm just going to go ahead and add it all the way around the edge here. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the rhinestone chain right on the edge. Okay, and you can see how pretty that looks. I'm just going to kind of lift it up a little bit. Just going to have to let it kind of sit and dry and do its thing, okay? Okay, now for the edge, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna take some rhinestone chain. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the inside because I don't want it to fall off while we're working on the inside. Now for the inside, it did keep the inside a little bit on the simpler side, just because um, it's good to add your pictures and stuff like that. I did pre-cut some of the pages here. Now on the inside, you're going to notice like this one's slightly smaller than the, than the, than the left-hand side. And the left-hand side is going to be bigger because you have the left over here. And this is still 5 by 7 So we're going to make this 5 by 7 okay? Do you guys have any questions so far? I think it's looking pretty cute, don't you guys think? Just gonna take some of my Put this on the left hand side. Remember, this one's still 5 by 7, so I'm just going to center it. Then I have my smaller piece, which goes on this side. on this you just want to make sure you're centering the paper right in the middle of the page. Actually I might have done this backwards but I think we'll be okay. I'm just going to move this one. Then this is the one that went on the other side so excuse me for that. Like, wait, that looks a little smaller. There we go. This is perfect. 
And I'm gonna put this one on this side. See, for some reason I felt like this looked a little smaller. And I'm like, wait, that doesn't look quite right. Kinda got that a little messed up here. But now it's perfect. You can see here. So this one's the one that's five by seven, and then we have the one that's smaller. And these are gonna be four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Okay, that's the measurement on those. Okay. Then I wanna take another piece of my stripe paper. And I'm gonna cut it down. So I like to put little photo mats in here. I'm gonna cut another photo mat at four by six. Cut this on to four by six. And that'll fit a perfect four by six photo. Just gonna ink the edges on this. And I'm going to go ahead and center this right in the middle of the page. Right here. Okay. I'm going to take my chipboard pieces. And the chipboard is item number 582470. I come in a neat bag like this so you don't lose them. And I'm going to take um, the one that says Merry Christmas. I'm going to take the backing off. And I always put a little bit of extra glue just in case. You never know. And that one's going to go right here. And on the left hand side here, I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, polka dot paper. I have this one right here. And I'm going to do four by, since this is five, so that's uh, four by five. I'm going to cut it down to four by five. So I'm going to take my paper and cut it down to four. And then I'm going to cut the next piece to five, like this. I'm going to use my quarter inch um, tape to make a pocket. I'm going to first ink the edges. And then I'm going to tape it on three sides with the quarter inch tape. And this tape is really good for pockets because it holds everything really well. So I'm just going to run it on three sides. You want to make sure that tape is nice and even. And you want to take off the backer off the tape. And it's going to go right here on the left hand side. So you're just going to go ahead and put it down at the bottom. And then it's going to be your pocket. Okay. So I'm going to take um, some flowers. I'm using the flowers that we had left over from this pack right here. And this was uh, 583422, that's the number for those. And I'm using this flower right here with the gold center. I'm going to go ahead and glue that on there. 
<clears throat> just in the corner. And I'm gonna take one of the leaves that we had from the other pack. Like this, and I cut it in half. And like I said, when you cut the half off, you can always take your scissors and make the corner pointy again so that it looks like a leaf again. So you don't waste the half part, see? So don't throw away your halves, just save them for something else. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the side here. And then I'll put another chipboard in here. I'm gonna put the little angel that's in this pack. Cute little angel in here. There she is. Looks something like this. So she cute. And then I'm gonna just glue it on top. Right here. You can take your journaling cards, and journaling cards look like this. And you can use those for journaling or for photos or anything like that. So I'm just going to take just a couple and just put them in the pocket just so I remember that there's a pocket in here. the next page here. And I have the paper already pre-cut for you guys. So this is the stripe paper we're going to be using. The same paper on both sides. And I'm just going to center it in the middle. Now while you're working on your book, like I said, you can always use your ink pad just to kind of keep it centered, okay? And that really helps you just work on the pages without moving them around too much, okay? Especially if you cover, that's why we didn't put the rhinestone chain yet, because you don't want it to fall off. So you just want to put the, the middle part in there that can, you can glue on. So we're going to take another piece of cream cardstock. You can use any cream cardstock. I'm just using some regular cream cardstock. And I'm going to cut another piece out so we can put it as a photo mat on the left. So I'm just going to cut that out. Two four by six. Okay. And you don't need to ink this one. This one's just as good as it is. And then we're going to center this on this side. That's good for another big size photo. Now I'm going to take some of my trim here. This is a gold doily trim that we came out with. This is um, 991043. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut one of the doilies out. And you can use this together or separate. I like them separate because you can use them for different things. You can use them on cards or books or to decorate a lampshade, whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and center this right here in the corner. And I'm going to use some fabric glue just because we're using fabric. And I'm going to center it right here in the corner. Just like that. And that's a nice little backdrop for our flower. So I'm going to take the next flower, 
Look something like this from that packet that had multiple ones. I'm going to go ahead and center it right here. And I'm taking another one of those lathes we used earlier. And I'm cutting it in half and putting half of it on here. I'm going to take another chipboard piece from the chipboard. I like the one that has like a star shape. Just like one that has like a little star on it. Right here. Looks something like this. It says a bright Christmas. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere that on there. Right here. Just kind of sticking out. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Just like that. Okay. Just gonna move this over here. Now we're gonna work on the other side. So for the other side, I'm going to create another pocket. Um, I love this berry paper, so I'm going to just make another pocket out of that. So it's four and three quarters. By four. going to ink the edges again. And I'm going to use my quarter inch tape. Making another pocket with um, that berry paper here. Just gonna go ahead and adhere this right here. Okay, and there's another pocket for you. I'm gonna take the large chipboard piece from this pack, which is this one. So cute. It's like a big card. Gonna put some glue behind it and I'm gonna center it right here in the middle of this part. I'm gonna take some of my wood icons. They look something like this. I'm gonna take the little Christmas tree. I'm gonna glue that guy right here at the bottom. And I'm going to get my cardigan 
my journaling cards if I can find them. There we go. And like I said, I mean, the pages don't have to be super complicated. I like keeping them simple because your pictures are really are what gonna, what's going to make this book shine. You're going to put all of your beautiful pictures in here. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this next. I'm using two of the berry papers. We're hoping to have the chipboard in this week. That's what I'm hearing. Should be here before Friday, actually. So, might be shipping sooner than we think. Hoping that it does get here. Okay, so now I'm going to be using another piece of paper. I'm using this dot paper. Again, I'm going to cut it down to four by six. I love how all the papers just look very beautiful layered. If you can see how beautiful they look. So I'm going to take another piece of my chipboard. I'm going to take this Santa. Love him. I think he's my favorite. Well, no. Actually, the guy in the front is my favorite, but he's my second favorite. I'm going to put him right here in the corner. I'm going to take the next flower from the packet that I was using earlier, just this one. Now I don't particularly love the center, so I'm just going to take it off and save it for something else. I'm going to put in my little jar of pearls there. Um, I went ahead and take it out and I'm going to replace it with something else and you guys will see what it is in a second. And then I'm going to take a chipboard, this cute little tiny chipboard with Santa on it. That's going to be the center. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that guy right in the middle of the flower. And then I'm going to take a leaf. These flowers come with these gold tip leaves. I kind of like those. So I'm just going to cut this in half. I'm just going to 
and stick that in there. And on the right hand side, I'm going to take a smaller strip of striped paper. Probably about, I would say, three inches. And then obviously by four and three quarters. I'm using walnut stain. So I have the bottom pocket, and I'm just going to go ahead and adhere three sides. And I'm using the quarter inch artisan tape again. So you want to finish making your pocket. And that's going to go on the right hand side. Right here. Now all these papers are coming from the A4 pad. Okay, so you can use the A4 pad or you can use 12 by 12, it doesn't really matter. And then on this part, we're going to take another piece of chipboard. I'm going to take this uh, postcard. It's a very cute postcard that says to Santa Claus. It's very cute. I'm going to take this little wood icon here from the wood icon pack. Looks something like this. Aren't they adorable? They're just so cute. And I'm going to put this guy right on the postcard. It's like they're writing a letter to Santa. I'm going to take a couple of more journaling cards here. Okay. Now I might have time for one more page here. I'm going to cut out the paper first because I didn't have it cut all the way. And um, for that paper, we're going to be using a piece from our A4 pad. If I can find it. There we go. I'm going to be using this piece of paper here. And I'm going to cut this down to, again, six and three quarters. By four and three quarters, but I want the 25, so I'm going to try to save that. Okay, so that's one side. And I like to save all my little bits here. And then I'm going to take out another piece of the paper. I'm 
And I want this part here, so I'm going to make sure I cut it out of that part. ink the edges on this. So this is going to be our left and right hand side. right hand side over here and I love this side because it has a 25 it's very cute so I'm going to take another piece of paper this one I love with the Santas I'm going to make a side pocket here just going to make sure this is cut at 6 and uh, Quarters. Yeah, the 25 is very, like, it's very subtle. That's why I like it. It's just kind of sitting there. I'm cutting out another six and three quarters by four inch pocket. Okay, and it's going to be for the left hand side over here. I'm just going to here right in the middle for a pocket. And I'm going to take some of my chipboard here. I love this little house. I think it's so cute. And I'm going to stick this down right up here I'm going to take another one of my doily trim and put it down here
And I'm going to find a nest. There's a cute little nest. If I can find it. Looks like this. And it's going to go in the middle of this. Just looks very cute. Okay. On the right hand side, we're going to just go ahead and do a photo mat. I'm going to take some of this paper here and do a four by four. I not have enough, so I'm going to have to cut another piece. Just going to use some of this, because it's my favorite. Four by four. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the middle. This is a photo mat. I don't want to cover up the 25, so that's why I'm not really putting a larger photo mat. I want to keep the 25. And I'm going to use one of the wood icons, the Santa, my fave. And I'm going to put him right here. Okay, now I do want to go through the rest of the book here with you guys so you guys can see what's left. We're kind of almost done here. So we have this part and then we have this that has all of the nice little waterfall and another photo mat. And the end is just a little craft pocket. And I like that pocket because you can add something to it. You can just add little notes or a little ephemera. Okay, looks very cute. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the front here. And I'm going to work on the spine just really quick before we go. I'm going to take some of my... Well, first I'm going to take this. This is um, one of our new metal embellishments. And this is um, 583538. I love these book plates because they look like old spines. And it's actually real metal, which I love. I'm going to take my artisan tape and I'm going to run a strip in the middle. And just adhere that in the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and take um, one of my screws. These are um, my Ginny Wheel screws. Okay, I love it because it has a bigger head. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and screw it into the side of the album. And it's really easy. You just kind of pu push it in and you just screw it in. And once you feel that it's nice and tight, okay, it's good to go. Now I'm going to take some of my rings. I love these rings. They come with uh, four different little sections. Okay, 
This is item 99626. I'm going to take one of the medium sized rings. And I'm going to take uh, my chain. This is my Cote Rouge chain, which means French Riviera chain. That might or might not be a hint to something. Who knows? But this is the copper, vintage copper looking one. Love it. I'm just going to go ahead and um, loop this chain on the side of the book with my jump ring. Put it right here. You can see how beautiful that looks inside. Okay. And I'm going to add some of my antique trinkets. La Rochelle. This is nine ninety seven two five. I love the amber on there. So I have the three coins and the amber locket. It looks like a locket to me, but it's really not a locket. And I'm going to take the smaller rings, just a couple. And I'm just going to go ahead and put them onto the chain. And I'm just going to pick random areas. Bank call 208, please. Bank call 208. <laughs> Looks like they're looking for me here. I have the last ring right here, just like that. And then you can add anything else you like. I mean, in the chipboard, it comes with a few other trinkets. Um, let me see where the pack is. It comes like this with a couple of other trinkets. So you can hang those off if you wanted to as well. And I think that's about it. Then all you have to do is put the dots around the edge, your rhinestone chain, and you're good to go. Do you guys have any questions on any of this? Thank you so much for being so patient, guys. Um, I think I have a couple of announcements before we go. Um, the next show coming up is Miranda on Thursday. And I kind of have the camera here. Miranda on Thursday um, at 6.30. She's going to be creating some uh, an adorable altar train. It's very, very cute. If you guys haven't seen it, she took like these blocks and she made a train. She's so amazing. Um, and she's going to show us so many techniques and a lot of clever ideas. Um, special delivery is sold out. However, we did launch a Julie Nutting Doll Club, if you guys haven't seen it. Um, we are selling hard-to-find um, Julie Nutting dolls. So if you guys check that out, it's on live with Prima.net. And lastly, we have Art Venture Anaheim, January 6th and 7th. A lot of amazing teachers. I'm going to be there. Finna Bear, Sharon, a lot of your favorite teachers. Vicki Wooden is going to be there. Um, Sandra Evertson. We're going to have um, John Creedon. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you guys check out Art Venture. It's a really fun time. Um, if you guys like creating projects, like different types of projects, books, altered art, mixed media, make sure you check that out. And other than that, I think we're good. Does anybody else have any other questions?
I would love to come to Clipper Street, hopefully soon. All right, ladies. Well, if you guys have no more questions, I will check you guys out later. Take care, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Oh, and I will be posting pictures of this book um, on my blog. You can check out my blog. That's frankgarciastudio.com. And also, um, the Scrapper Diaries will have all of the images for this album. Okay? Check that out.